Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this is going to be the upcoming May Kickstarters. This is going to be all the Kickstarters launching in May, or more specifically, not actually all the Kickstarters, rather those that I currently know about. There will be plenty more that I will find out about later. And also those that seem to have enough of a following, meaning if a Kickstarter ha is coming up in May and their Facebook page has two people following it, I don't assume it's going to do particularly well and I kind of leave it out of the video. My goal here is to give you information about Kickstarters that I think are going to fund and not Kickstarters that I think are going to struggle. I may make the wrong judgment call there, but that's going to be this list. And starting off the bat, we're going to have Chai, Chai Tifa 2 launching on May 4th. And in fact, most of these first batch are going to be launching on May 4th. We'll go through them one at a time. But Chai Tifa 2 is going to be the two-player version of Chai. I actually have a review going up for this one shortly. But what I will say off the bat is this is not the regular Chai game that you may have heard of before. This is going to be a two-player version, completely different gameplay, and significantly heavier in what it's bringing to the table. A lot more depth and strategy and push and pull as you try to min max and optimize your way to victory as you grow tea on these plantations and then manipulate through the card engine and through other moves slowly manipulating the way the team moves up your plantation until you eventually can sell them off on these boats over here. And that's going to be Chai Tifa 2 coming May 4th. Uh, next up on May 4th, we have Aldabas Doors of Cartagena by Grand Gamers Guild. This is going to be a, an optimization game where you're laying out these doors. You're taking these doors and you're laying them all out next to each other. Every single door you place out is going to give you both endgame benefits as well as in-game bonuses. So you're trying to get more money, buy more cards, uh, put cards into your vault, put coins into your vault, put coins on top of cards to manipulate the the influence you have on each card as you vie for control over five different guilds and getting the influence and scoring bonuses of those it's very much a placement game where you have to try to min max which cards go where in which sequence before the game end is triggered that's going to be aldabas doors of cardigana from grand gamers guild on may 4th then we have we have coming up we have vivid from sagrada from not from sagrada but from floodgate games the same company that brought you sagrada we have Vivid, which is going to be re a game of recreating your childhood memories in terms of the theme of it. In terms of the actual gameplay, the gameplay is one uh, of trying to connect these various gems. I wish I had a good picture of it over here, but they, you're going to be connecting these gems on this central on your own personal player board as you try to connect different gems to different key memory points. And as you do so, you're going to score points for those memory points and then slot those gems, giving you recurring scoring bonuses every single round. Along the way, you're collecting cards from a center row, and the way you collect those cards the points at which you empty those cards will give you abilities and to also take up your card slots and also give you points the game is a a tight thinky puzzle system it's beautiful to look at which you expect expect no less from floodgate games but it is also a meaty thinky experience and that's going to be vivid coming to kickstarter on may 4th next up we have a game that i don't know much about the gameplay i can't talk about this one in depth at all this is going to be ice from this way and this is one that i don't actually know all that much but i do know they have a a thriving a facebook page already I know Quackalope has had the opportunity to play this and has said good things about it. As far as the gameplay, I just don't know enough about it. I didn't see anything I could find offhand, and I didn't have time to overly look into everything. It's going to be true of a few of these. A few of these uh, today, I did not have time to overly uh, research as much as I would have otherwise liked to, but Ice is one that I would otherwise be paying attention to. Next up from there. We have Dark Rituals Ma Malice Malefic Dark Rituals Malice Maleficarium. This is going to be by Dark Gate Games, and they're coming out with a soundtrack on Kickstarter. Now, soundtrack for those who don't know is code for we want to re-release this game on Kickstarter and sell more of it, but we can't because Kickstarter rules. We have to actually create something new, and so we're going to create a soundtrack. By the way, you can also buy all the old games and stock and everything else. Which, again, personally speaking, I have no problem with whatsoever. It allows us to get the game, but that's just keywords for what's going on there but dark rituals is going to be a game that is a one versus many experience you have the i don't think they're called heroes you have the the something versus the witches in this game it's a one versus many experience and one versus many could be one versus one or you know one versus two one versus three one versus four generally these systems i find tend to thrive at one versus one and one versus two the more players you introduce it does add a little bit more to the teamwork aspect but it also ends up cluttering up the gameplay a lot more and reducing and adding downtime between what you're doing versus what you're waiting for others to to do but past that it's going to be a typical dungeon crawl experience you have your boards you have your powers you have your abilities you're going to take turns going back and forth between yourself the the heroes again not actually called heroes taking their turns and the wishes activating various minions on the board trying to figure out who can get that edge get that power back and forth and figure out a way to well destroy each other uh, the miniatures in this game are absolutely gorgeous it's worth looking through the campaign page and forget these this is one of those situations where the renders arguably look worse than the actual miniatures which is bizarre to say but the miniatures in this game 
team are absolutely gorgeous. This is the same company that had it had the other Kickstarter. What was the other Kickstarter recently? It was a Kickstarter that recently funded. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but I can't. Neomorphosis. Neomorphosis Infestation. That's what they recently had. That's who Dark Gate Games recently had. And this is going to be Dark Rituals, Malice, Mephic Maleficarum, coming to Kickstarter May 4th. From there, we have Kiwi Chowdown, coming to you from Detestable Games and Draco Studios. That's going to be the same company that brought you, one of those companies brought you War for Chicken Island, and the other one brought you like a... Uh, uh, dingoes and some dingoes riding dinos or some game like that but it's gonna be a game where you're going to be uh, trying to outnumber your opponents and claim dominance over the section it's gonna have a board that slowly shrinks around you as you have area majority and trying to uh, eat up valuable resources as you go through the game this is another one that Quacklo talked about in his 10 uh, 12 upcoming games to Kickstarter so this is gonna be one that's coming to Kickstarter May 4th and worth paying attention to also you know cute little miniatures or whatnot with a little bit of character something a little different than what you may otherwise be used to seeing from there, we have Game Brewer once again hitting Kickstarter. Game Brewer is having such an incredible year on Kickstarter. Game after game after game. They just, uh, they're just finishing, they're just finishing the other most recent one. Uh, Hippocrates is finishing on Kickstarter. And now they have Paris, which is going to be launching, but more specifically, not Paris, but rather the expansion to Paris. Uh, Paris Atoll, I could be saying that wrong, is going to be coming to Kickstarter. And this is going to be doubling down the gameplay with, uh, you know, new collection tiles, bonus tiles, and unique player powers, basically more cards and more things now I haven't actually played Paris but at the same time anything that adds player powers and set bonuses and more cards more abilities that's exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for in games and so I mean it, if you're a fan of Paris check this one out and if you haven't had the chance to play Paris well this is going to be an opportunity to get the full deluxe version of Paris on the Kickstarter along with the expansion from there again on May 4th I believe we're still on May 4th nope we Paris is in May 10th my bad Paris is up to May 10th and now we're up to Castle Panic Deluxe coming to you with May 11th. Castle Panic Deluxe will tried launching a Kickstarter a while ago and unfortunately they had to cancel the funding. They didn't see the the, the progress for that they were looking for. They funded it in like two seconds because they had a $5,000 funding goal but in practice they didn't actually get to where they wanted to be. A lot of that was going to be pushed back that a lot of people wanted to see once they were upgrading past the Castle Panic, once they're giving you Deluxified everything, a lot of people wanted to see Deluxified everything for all the expansions as opposed to this weird hybrid model where they're like, here's Castle Panic Deluxe but also here's some, you know, non-deluxe game expansions you can buy along with this that don't really mix and match but you can sort of mix and match so it was a weird kind of, uh, of a deluxe find the base game but not everything else which people wanted everything else deluxified and so cast panic deluxe i don't know whether they are coming to the table with everything deluxified now i do know if you scroll through the updates or if you subscribe to the youtube channel you can see some of the additional miniatures some of the sculpts overall it looks great i've never had the opportunity to play castle panic myself it's one of those games that i kind of skipped past and just never really got to the table uh, in terms of game weight it seems to be catered towards more of a family friendly or younger audience that said it, it could be not i'm curious if you play castle panic and you've played it as a you know with your friends and not with a family let me know because it's one that always looked okay but just looked too younger kid focused which is why i always passed on that one that said, if you're interested in, you know, deluxifying your Castle Panic or jumping in for the first time, coming to Kickstarter May 11th. From there, we have Chip Theory Games. Chip Theory Games is going to be bringing, bringing you Hoplomachus, Hoplomachus Victorum, also coming to Kickstarter May 11th. This is one that's basically going to be a reimagining of the Hoplomachus series. This is a Hoplomachus is one of their very well-loved series. They have Origins, they have other games with the Hoplomachus name that I can't remember offhand, but Hoplomachus is a great game. I had the opportunity to play it quite a while ago. It is a solo and or two-player experience that, for me, I ultimately got rid of it, not because it wasn't good, but because it did most, Chip Theory, uh, Too Many Bones did most of what Hoplomachus did, but overall better. I prefer Too Many Bones, so I kept that one, but I will be 100% paying attention to Hoplomachus Victorum because they're trying to, to both streamline the game, update it to, you know, where they are as a company nowadays, new art, new whatever, new stuff, so so I'm intrigued by Half Marcus Victorum. I'll be paying attention to it, and that will be launching on May 11th. From there, also on May 11th, we have Mosaic. Mosaic is going to be by Forbidden Games and Glenn Drover. Now, Glenn Drover is the designer of one of my favorite games, uh, Empire's Age of Discovery. Absolutely love that game. He's also the designer of Lizard Wizard and Raccoon Tycoon, and those are both solid games as well, so I will 100% be paying attention to Mosaic. Mosaic is going to be a semi-abstracted civ building game with a map that straight up looks like a mosaic, which is excellent. You're going to take turns to slowly but surely get your, your unique advantages, to get your scoring tiles, to go through all this. You can see a picture of the board over here. You can see at how it has a mosaic background to the board, and this is going to be launching on Kickstarter May 11th, and I'll be paying attention because 
Forbidden Games has done a solid job and Glenn and in their past games and Glenn Drover is in general just does amazing stuff and I'm a huge fan. So that's going to be Mosaic coming to Kickstarter May 11th. Then we have Vengeance Roll and Write also on May 11th. This is going to be from Mighty Boards and this is going to be a Roll and Write that I am simultaneously intrigued by but also not certain of. Now the reason for that is going to be because this is a, a Roll and Write game with a real time element. You're going to be rolling your dice rapidly to try to get the symbols you need and set aside your dice, lock them in and then once that phase is done, once you have everything locked in, you'll actually then execute on what you earned, going through room by room, trying to attack the bad guys, fight the boss, all that stuff. I recommend watching Not Not Board Gaming has a has a Kickstarter prototype of the game, and he went through it. He seemed to really like the game overall. Again, for me, the real time aspect has me a little bit worried because real time games have always been a struggle for me. There's only a handful that have really made it. I think Project Elite is one that's great. Other than that, not many. Maybe Magic Maze. Real time games generally have not lasted a very long time in my collection but I on the other hand I love roll and rights and so combined what the bit combining these two elements what how I think the game would play out and watching not board gaming overall I am interested this is gonna be coming to you with two different uh, basically series so to speak you have vengeance roll and fight one and vengeance roll and fight two and that's basically just giving you more different content that you can mix and match. Think of it as Railroad Inc., the four different boxes they have. You have two different boxes here. I'll be paying attention because Roll and Write, and that's usually enough for me. Also, I believe David Tercy is involved, and I, I, I tend to pay attention to most of the stuff that he does as well. And then from, from there, On Mars is going to be coming to Kickstarter May 14th. May 14th, we're going to have On Mars Alien Invasion coming to you from Eagle Griffin Games. This is going to be the sequel to On Mars, and it's going to be bringing you a bunch of different modules and a bunch of different ways to play the game from cooperative to solo to adding different content content to the game across four chapters. I have not had the opportunity to play on Mars just yet, but I can tell you that, I mean, I, I really need to play my Lacerda games. I have like three of them on the shelf, not on Mars. I have uh, Escape Plan and Lisboa and The Gallerist, and I have not played any of them, and it's a crying shame, and I really need to fix that. I've read the rules for two of them, but played zero of them, and that's ultimately what counts, but that's neither here nor there. We're talking about on Mars Alien Invasion, a somewhat cooperative expansion, launching on Kickstarter May 14th. Then up from there, we have the Paradox Initiative coming May 18th. Now, this is one that I find very intriguing, specifically because this is by Elf Creek Games. You see that over here? That's going to be Elf Creek Games, and yet you look at this cover, and that doesn't look like an Elf Creek Games cover. Elf Creek Games has some of the most gorgeous, amazing production that I've seen in board games. One, like, if you, if you ask me which company do I most associate with quality games, I mean, I'd have to think between Elf Creek, between Burnt Island Games... It, those two really they have just amazing production quality there are others I'm absolutely sure there's others but those two t tend to spring to mind when I think of gorgeously produced games with gorgeous art and gorgeous component quality and yet the Paradox Initiative is going to be an interesting balance because the Paradox Initiative is actually based it re-implements the game Paradox which is previously on Board Game Geek let's go ahead and open this over here and that's going to be one that uh, keep in mind it came in at a 7.1 solid rating but not amazing but those, both of them are going to be designed by Brian Sir from Mer Merchants of the Dark Road also by Elf Creek Games but this is going to be a reimagining of that game and part of the game is, involves the idea that the original game kind of combined the artwork of like 15 different artists for a specific aspect of kind, kind of simulating this broken off universe with different feelings from different civilizations or whatnot, and so they had different artists come in to replicate that. I don't know if Elf Creek Games is going to be bringing in one one unified artist or branching it up again, but overall the gameplay itself combines a lot of aspects you're familiar with, the card drafting, set collection, resource management, all that, but then it also gives you a kind of bejeweled-like grid or whatnot. Let me see if I can find a picture over here. The bejeweled-like grid is going to be let's see, over here, you can see this kind of over here, this is going to be this aspect of kind of mixing, matching chips to like score them or pop them like they are war in Bejeweled. I haven't actually played the game, but that's a combination of, of a bit of a gimmick with familiar gameplay. Now, I don't know much about Paradox. The, if I was just looking at that one alone, I would not be interested. But, I mean, Brian Sir and Elf Creep Games, that is... That's something I'm 100% paying attention to on May 18th when that hits Kickstarter. Coming up from there, we have some more 18th games. We have Maximum Apocalypse, Wasted Wilds. It's going to be more Maximum Apocalypse from Rock Manor Games. This is just going to continue the series of, of the Maximum Apocalypse universe, which is going to have you know tons of, of cooperative gameplay with adventure, exploration, strategic choices, rogue gameplay, roguelike gameplay, all that. Maximum Apocalypse, Wasted Wilds is going to be like the fourth or fifth in that series. Let's see over here. We have Maximum Apocalypse over here. And what do we have in that series? We have 
expansions. I'm just trying to take a look at what we have. We have a decent amount of expansions. We have Bug Populous, Redhead, Gothic Horrors, Jurassic Perils, Kaiju Rising. And those are just expansions. Those aren't even like side standalone side-by-side -side games in the overall Maximum Apocalypse family. But if you wanted more Maximum Apocalypse, this is another opportunity to jump in on that series because that's coming to Kickstarter May 18th. Uh, from there, we're going to have Soundbox coming to you from Horrible Guild. This continues Horrible Guild's amazingly interesting horrible guild just has a, such a wide diversity of of what type of games they bring to the table from strategy to pushed full-on party to lightweight to hybrid they have railroad ink which we already talked about in this video we have soundbox we have uh, what else do they have we have dungeon fighter we have and did i say horrible guild yeah, horrible guild yeah i almost called them horrible games they were originally horrible games they rebranded to horrible guild because it wasn't great for them when people constantly talked about the horrible games that horrible games made. But Soundbox is going to be very much a party experience. It's going to be one where you four to seven players are going to be playing together with one player potentially, you know, blindfolded or whatnot as the other players uh, try to basically get them to figure out the sound as they're all making sounds together. I don't know exactly the way it plays out, but it sounds like a complete mess with four players at the table making sounds while, while the one player tries to figure out what's exactly is going on. It, it, it does sound very gimmicky. I don't know if I'm going to get this one or not. It sounds like it's great for a few laughs. I don't know if it has longevity or if it's just a unique, interesting twist on the party game genre, but it's horrible guild and I, I will be paying attention because I do like their games. I recently played uh, Tiny Turbo Cars from them and it was an absolute blast. I thought it was going to be a light gimmicky game and I think I'm really going to enjoy playing that one again and again. Coming up from there we have Final Fusion May 24th from Gindy Games. It's going to be the same company that brought you Enchanters and they're bringing you Final Fusion which at a glance sounds like a smash up game. It sounds like a game where you're going to be combining an alliance of two alien races both of them contributing unique cars and unique miniatures as well. A unique miniature a fleet which is represented by a miniature with a function Functional tray. I don't know exactly what that actually means, practically speaking, but the gameplay is coming in at 60 to 90 minutes. It sounds like it's a heavier game than Smash Up was. I don't know how it's going to be differentiating itself in terms of what it's bringing to the table. This wouldn't be the first time, and keep in mind, Smash Up is not the only game that has ever relied on a system of combining different sets of cards. I mean, Sorcerer does it as well, although it does it in an interesting way, but there are many other game systems that involve combining or smashing up sets of cards, and Final Fusion does sound like it's going to be continuing that. I don't know what the gameplay is going to be looking like. I do know that, I mean, it's Gindy, which means I'm paying attention already just from Enchanters alone. Enchanters is one that I didn't end up keeping at the end of the day, but I really did enjoy it for a long time, and, and we'll have to see what else they end up bringing to the table in this one. Uh, I know they've partnered with Mythic Games on some things. It does not seem like they are partnering with Mythic on this one. I haven't seen any note of collaboration between them, but it's coming to Kickstarter on May, what did I say, May 24th? On May 24th. Moving on from there, we have Adventure Tactics, Adventure and Alchemy coming to Kickstarter May 25th. This is going to be the sequel, the expansion to not the sequel the expansion to adventure tactics uh do, domin dominaires do, domains dominates tower something like that but adventure tactics is a game that i i really need to get my copy played because i need to do a review of it i need to talk about it but it's one that a lot of people said a lot of different things about it but overall whether you like it or don't i've seen this this the one common trait i've seen about adventure tactics from both those who liked it and those who did not is that it has one of the best leveling up systems that we currently have in gaming it just gives you constantly leveling up hybrids of class hybrids where you can develop, expand uh, upon the different options on the table. This is going to be bringing in the Alchemist as a class as well. Uh, I believe it's going to be bringing you the Alchemist class, a new mini campaign, all of that, but more content for this game. And of course, if you missed it and you want to get in on it, well, I mean, they're, they're going to give you the option to get the original game as well. I haven't actually seen that, but this is Kickstarter and that's what generally tends to happen. Next up, we're going to have Lock Up, Lock Up Breakout coming to you from, 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 from Thunderworks Games. This is coming to you on May 25th and this is going to be the expansion to Lockup. Lockup is going to be a game by by Stanislav uh, Kodans Stan, Stan Kodansky, and this is one that Lockup is a game that, to a certain extent, if you've ever played the original Aladdin's Dragons, it has uh, echoes of that gameplay of placing down your workers, some face up, some face down, in different locations, and then whoever has the most power in that location gets to benefit from that location. But this Lockup is going to be adding to that game by adding a full new level of catacombs underneath the prison that you're escaping in or working in or whatever it is where you have influence in with the guards and the people and the factions and all that so it's adding a whole new element to that game so if you're a fan of the game if you're interested or if you never had the opportunity to check it out I mean Stan Kodansky has some awesome games under his belt most of his games I have loved well most of his games all of his games I've liked and most of them I've ended up keeping so overall I'm paying attention for that unfortunately I still have lock up on my shelf just waiting to be played and not yet played unfortunately so far 
From there, we have Castlescape coming to you on May 25th as well. Castlescape is going to be bringing you, this is going to be from Praetorian Board Games, and this is a, a new new publisher, a new game, and Castlescape is going to be bringing you area control and deck building combined. You're going to be slowly but surely trying to build up these little areas with these with these castle walls. You're going to have a, a starting deck of cards as well as the ability to, uh, to augment your deck, to build your deck, just like any standard deck builder, although with some twists around corruption and, and taking these aspects of taking cards that are better for you but give you corruption in the game. But throughout the game, you're going to be adding influence to these areas. You're going to be adding walls to the board. You're going to be trying to create areas and score them because the walls will help anyone. But adding, adding your flags, your people, your cubes to those areas are going to give you more opportunity to score points for them. Meanwhile, you're also trying to balance your own personal goals in your hand as well as some side goals on the board that everyone can have access to until you eventually go through enough rounds where the, the board state finishes it off and you slowly but surely run into the end game and whatnot. But it's going to be combined, like I said, the, pro, the, the core conceit of this game is going to be combining deck building with area control with this this castle wall building system and trying to take advantage of the cards on the table to most efficiently build your engine that's gonna be castlescape moving on from there we have the witcher old world coming to you on may 25th as well the witcher old world from go on board they brought you titans they brought you valhalla and this is going to be the witcher the witcher the witcher the witcher this game currently on kickstarter has like 30,000 plus people following it right now this thing is going to cross Let's just make a number now. This thing's going to cross $4 million on Kickstarter. I'm just calling it now because why not? I assume it will, by the way, because the amount of hype and buzz around this game. Keep in mind, if you go to the YouTube channel for this, each of their videos has like 20,000 plus views around this. The Witcher Old World announcement has 355,000 views. That's absolutely insane. The most recent gameplay has 40,000 views. And I do recommend watching this gameplay, by the way. This gameplay is going to be around, it's around 25 minutes or so. I've watched the whole thing and it gives you a solid feel for how the game plays. Now, it might not be a game for you, and that's fine, but more importantly, whether it is or isn't, if you watch the gameplay, you'll have a good idea. This is going to be a competitive game. I believe they made the announcement that one of the uh, the expansions or stretch goals or something in the Kickstarter is going to be fully cooperative gameplay, but even in its current form, in terms of competitive play, you're think of it more like uh, Runebound or whatnot, where you are trying to, you're going through the, your, the board and trying to fight different creatures and level up and occasionally running into each other and fighting each other as well. But overall, The Witcher Old World, they, it brings you deck building, it brings you board exploration, it brings you some degree of narrative and choices and, and decisions, it brings you leveling up, lots of different aspects that seem to work well together, and it's from Go On Board, which have brought you solid games to date. I am very intrigued, I'll 100% pay attention, I'll almost certainly be backing it. I love The Witcher, I love the, the comics, the, the original books, I love the TV show with Henry Cavill, and I'm looking forward to the board game to see if it is or isn't good, but hopefully good, because I want it to be good, and that's usually... That's usually why games are good. When I want them to be good, that's usually when they're good. But $4 million, that's what I'm calling. I'm calling $4 million in this one. Next up, we have Fjorda. Fjorda is going to be launching on May 28th as well. And this is another one where I don't know a lot about. I mean, it says it's called Fjorda and it has, you know, similar title to the recently on Kickstarter Fjords. And it also has, you know, a hex based system where your looks similar ish. I don't know much about the gameplay on this one, unfortunately. I can't overly comment. So forgive the fact that I sound like I don't know much about it because I don't indeed know much about it past what it says on BGG over here, but coming to Kickstarter May 28th. Then from there we have Prison Architect, Carver County Penitenti Penitentiary, and this can be another one with David Tersey involved, and this is one that is going to be based on the, the video game. So, similar to The Witcher, which, I mean, I guess The Witcher technically is not based on the video game, so much as it is based on the books. I guess the books came first, right? I think so. Pretty sure. Either way. But we're going to have The Prison Architect, which is going to be giving you a, a game where you're trying to build the most efficient prison that you can. And it's very much tongue-in-cheek humor in the sense that the game has a lot of, uh, both, the, both the, the video game as well as the board game has aspects of... of dark humor of managing a prison and keeping your prisoners happy but being efficient it has a degree of dark humor it may be off-putting to some but for me i'm intrigued I, I i don't mind dark humor and overall the game involves bidding on tiles so there's a degree of tile placement and a degree of auction as you bid on the right tiles to fit into your prison to most efficiently build your profit focused engine of managing prisoners in it it sounds it sounds worse the worse the more i talk about it but yeah the uh, prison architect is one that i'm gonna be paying attention to because I mean, who's it by? It's far by... I know it's by David Tercy, but it's by Paradox Initiative. PSC Games is going to be bringing this one to Kickstarter. And that's basically everything. Lastly, totally not May, but I just got the announcement on this one. Uh, Wild Ascent Levon Rising, for those who don't know, this is going to be coming to Kickstarter on June 29th. They just put the date in place, 61 days, so June 29th. Uh, they have a whole bunch of things in there. If you're back of the original Wild Ascent, read the most recent update. 
They put a bunch of things in there about how effectively anyone who is a previous backer of Wild Ascent, they fully understand the fact that they don't want you, they don't want to push you into while well, backing an expansion for a game that you haven't even play, had the opportunity to play yet. And so to that end, you will have all the perks of anyone who was an early bird backer, or anything like that, any discounts as well. And you're going to have all of that in the late pledge as well the entire time. So yes, it's true. This will be on game found sooner than you might otherwise want. But at the same time, you will have plenty of time to plenty. Well, you should have plenty of time. You'll have plenty of time to play your game, make decisions accordingly, and decide whether it's for you before committing to this one. So you don't have to worry about that. You're going to be locked in, and you'll have access to this down the road. It, it, again, I, I, they understand as well as I understand that I mean, in general, when you have expansions for games you haven't had the opportunity to play yet, there's a certain degree of FOMO of, but I want more, but I haven't even played it. It's it's always a tricky situation. And that's going to be Wild Ascent, Love on Rising. That's going to be everything. Uh, as usual, there will always be games that come out later. There will always be announcements and things that change and pivot last minute, things that I don't know about, or things I just missed out entirely, or things that won't be announced until two days before the campaign goes live, which is why you should just words, which is why you should subscribe to Self Clutter, because he does these videos every single week where he talks about the campaigns coming out, so anything I missed here, you will find out from him in his weekly videos. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and have a good one.